get. He said he was joining us, but didn't respond back, and I don't see him. Uh, we'll give him one minute, and we'll start. Sounds good to me. And just a quick comment to all the attendees. Um, as soon as your application is done, you can feel free to leave the meeting. You don't need to attend the entire meeting. And if you have any questions throughout the meeting, please use the chat function. Thanks. I see Mr. Webster is uh, getting on here. So we'll just wait for a moment. You have not entered any Please re-enter your meeting ID, Rick, can you hear us? Microphone's off, so hard to tell. Dennis? Yep. I've lost your video, Henry. Henry uh, you... I'm kicking in and out of here. You're cutting in and out? Then why don't you call in on your cell phone? You there, Henry? Yeah, but my thing, I keep kicking in and out of here. Henry, um, if you try turning off your video, sometimes in rural areas, if you're doing both video and um, the microphone, it seems to not be so great. Um, but if you turn off your video, just see if we can hear you well, or if you can hear us. I can hear you, and I just uh, and I just stopped the video, so. Okay, can yeah, we me? can hear you. Yep, we can hear you clearly. Um, so we just don't get to see your lovely face, but it does work. If you need to, to say anything, Henry, just flip your video back on and mute yourself. Okay. Okay. Rick, what are you, what's your status there? Oh, there he is. He's coming on, on the line now. Yeah. I can see his phone number in there now, I think. Yep, that's him. Okay. You there, Rick? You'll just have to press star six to unmute yourself, Rick. Anybody got me there? We can hear you, but you got a lot of echo there. All right. I'm gonna mute. We have no video of you, Rick. Are you there, Rick? Yeah, 
Henry, you're still good? Yeah, I hear you. Thank you. Rick, where are you? All right, it's nine or seven of six. We, we have to get this meeting started. Hopefully Rick will be able to join in one way or the other. So this committee of adjustment meeting held on July the 28th, 21, come to order at 7.06 p.m. May I have a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Kennedy, seconded by Cooney. All in favor? Carried. Yes. Thank you. You can, yeah, you can yell, Henry. Or the, can you hear me too, guys? Okay. Yep. Are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest this evening? No. I see none. I have a motion that the Committee of Adjustment meeting minutes dated June the 30th, 2021 be adopted as presented. May I have a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Cooney, seconded by Kennedy. All in favor? Henry, confirm? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Carried. Welcome this committee of adjustment meeting to allow the public an opportunity to express their views regarding the proposed minor variances and consent within the Township of Springwater. Each applicant and their agent, if applicable, will be given the opportunity to present the applications to the committee in public. Additional information on each of the applications, including any presentation materials, is available in the Committee of Agenda, Agenda on the Township website. Following, those members of the public whom registered to make oral submissions prior to 4.30 p.m. yesterday, July 27, 2021, will be given the opportunity to do so. All oral submissions will be included in this meeting's minutes and form part of the public record, including the name and addresses of the speaker, as information collected under the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. The minutes of the meeting will be posted on the Township website. All comments or questions should be addressed through the chair. I'll ask now the Secretary Treasurer to please introduce the first application item number 4.1 on the agenda. You're muted, Planner Belcourt. Please Sorry understand. about that. I thought I clicked it. Um, item 4.1 on the agenda is a minor variance application A1821 submitted by W. Lou, owner of lands municipally known as Two Buttercup Lane. The purpose and effect of the application is to permit the replacement of a non-conforming use, secondary dwelling, with an alternate usable floor area, increased height, and addition of a deck slash porch area whereas section 3.28.4 of the zoning bylaw requires any replacement of non-conforming use to be in the exact location with no increase in height, volume, or usable floor area. The variance would allow an increase in the gross floor area and height to accommodate a loft and to allow for an addition of a deck and porch. Thank you. Has there been any additional correspondence and more comments received regarding this application? Comments were received from the Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority requesting deferral as detailed in their letter dated July 28, 2021. Complete comments can be viewed on the agenda. Thank you. I'll ask the applicant to introduce themselves and provide us an overview of what it is that you're looking for to be done. Yes, thank you. Um, my name is Kelly. My husband and I bought this property and we were welcomed by the nicest neighbors in the world when we first arrived. We're a family of four. We love the area. We enjoy the lake. Unfortunately, the current building is run down and uninhabitable. The foundation has given away. The structure and the floor have partially collapsed and has multiple large holes in the roof. Um, animals have gained access through these flaws as they left trace trails of feces. You can see from the pictures how bad shape the building is in. Um, the building, it doesn't fit 
with the character character of the neighborhood, which consists of beautiful, cute houses and cottages. So the purpose of my application is to do modest improvements to restore the building to a livable condition, and the one that fits in and contributes to the beautiful view of the rest of the neighborhood. Um, we were disappointed by the last minute and VCA comments on my application, given that we submitted a complete separate application to NVCA in May and paid their permit fees, even before we brought our application to the township. Um, we heard nothing except these last minute comments. And um, I want to say we're not building a mansion or something that is out of character. We're simply asking to replace the building with an increased height uh, for a loft, a portion of deck, and we're shorting the structure by seven feet away from the shoreline. Um, I think the conservation authority has overlooked or misunderstood my application. The minor improvements of application, my application are based on section 45.2 of the Planning Act, which allows the property owners to expand, enlarge a legal non-conforming use. And that's what, what, that's what we are doing. And we are doing the modest improvement um, at its footprint. And we try to bring back the same use it had. Um, or lake is dam controlled and the erosion measures are in place. The house has been there for 70 years with no flooding. Plus we're moving the structure seven feet away from the shoreline than the existing rundown. Um, there are many houses around the lake that are closer to the water than my proposal. And the structure is on my land that has no public access that eliminating any threat to public safety. Um, the Conservation Authority, unfortunately, they overlooked all this in their comments, but it did not even looking at the, the all positive improvements we're making. Um, there's no other place to build this new building. And I also, I also want to bring to the committee's attention, currently we have nowhere to live on this property. We were even using camping tents to stay on the property. Last week, over the raining days, we had to take cover in the house and it was pouring inside too. We were moving around inside, literally trying to get a dry spot over the night. So we don't see any benefit of deferring this application would, would, would do to any of the neighborhood or the environment. The building's already there and is going to continue polluting the environment if we let it rotten further. I don't think it can sit for another winter um, granting my application would allow me to restore and improve the environment. The footprint is not is going to be any different, but going to be better. Um, I really hope the committee would per continue to proceed and approve my application. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Uh, to the Secretary, Secretary Treasurer, are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions? There is no members of the public registered to make an oral submission on this application. Thank you. Do any members of the committee wish to comment or have any questions of the applicant? Go ahead, Rick. Go ahead, Mr. Webster. You have to unmute yourself, Rick, you're muted. You're muted, Rick. Here, how about that? Can, you, can I be heard now? You're okay now, go ahead. I'm sorry, is that okay now? Yes, it is, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I attended the premises yesterday and um, uh, I feel very, uh, Story, if you will, uh, for the situation that uh, exists there, um, I, I I suspect that part of the problem. May I call you Kelly? I, I suspect that part of the issue there is an overall plan on the property. Uh, since there are three uh, distinct buildings there, uh, I suspect that part of the issue, not only just at the at this time, but going forward will be an overall plan of how you intend
then to develop the property and restore the property. Uh, that would include septic issues, uh, a well issue, um, uh, utilities in terms of gas and, and uh, electricity. Um, and so I'm, I'm respectful of the fact that you've made a huge investment on, on, on this property. Uh, but I think that what might be missing is a, is a total uh, a total plan to the NDCA as well as the municipality on what your what your intentions are. Your short term goal, of course, is to create a, a habitable um, uh, a spot there. But even that's in question because there's no electricity, and I'm not sure where your where, where your septic is is at. Uh, whether you have to pump it up over the hill to an existing septic or whatever. So there's there's a host of issues here that probably involve the plan on the whole property. And I think you might find a, um, a more direct road or route to, you, to, to your approvals for the various agencies if you were to put an overall plan on the property uh, from, from the road right through to the water rather than I don't know, try to um, make something work for the interim, and that's that's just my comment as a as a citizen and a uh, a member of the committee and somebody who's been involved in the building industry much of my life. So I'll just leave that as a thought for you going forward. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Go ahead, Planner Belfort. Um, thank you, Chair Gannon. I just wanted to note that in my planning report, I did state that the applicant is proposing a septic system. Um, as part of this swelling. So they will be working with the MVCA and the building department yes. for that review, um, but that is part of their proposal. Thank you. Um, Mr. Webster, in, can you move your phone closer to you next time you speak? You were very uh, hard to hear. Thank you. Member Cooney, did you wish to make some comments? Uh, yes, if I may. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, my first comments are, um, there seem to be missing data with regards to the septic bed. I know your your uh, comments in your report, uh, Planner Belcourt indicated that they were planning to uh, upgrade the septic bed. Is there not an existing septic bed and there's no existing well either? Okay, so that clarifies part of my comments. The other, the other question I have to staff is, um, this is a private road. So how do they get a designated frontage on a private road do we not have to have access to a municipal right-of-way and I'm, I'm only asking the question because I don't know um, in that respect and as member Webster indicated if utilities are to come in is there an easement required over the private road to do so and will that mean subsequent applications um, go ahead uh Thank you, Member Cooney. Through um, Chair Gannon, the, the way the bylaw reads, there's a section in the general provisions that state that properties do need frontage and access on a year-round maintained road. However, there is a clause in that provision that states um, that any properties that exist on a private road um, prior to the passing of the bylaw, they are deemed to have frontage for the purposes of the bylaw. So this property is on a front on a private road. Um, it is not maintained by the township, but there are legal easements for each of the properties already established for that right of way um, and access to the property. In terms of easement um, for utilities, I believe there are utilities on some of the other um, buildings on the property. So that would be up for to Kelly maybe to determine um, if there is anything. I believe there is gas and hydro on at least yes. one of those other dwellings. Um, so perhaps they will be accessing it through that, um, but that will be up to her to deal with through the utility companies. Um, um, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Just one more point. Um, yeah. Back to the septic question. Um, so as we stated, yes, um, a septic will be proposed. We do not have details as that is something that will be dealt with through the design stage in consultation with both MBCA and the building department, um, as that is their area of expertise. Right. Okay. Thank you. The, the last question I have again for the planning staff is um, I'm not really sure on the plan that was provided that there are some uh, lines uh, indicating the side yard setback for the building. Um, 
are, are you indicating that the existing building is non-compliant for side yard setback on the east property line? And, and that is, that is um, through you, um, Chair Gannon, that is correct. The existing interior side lot setback um, to the east is deficient. However, it's legal non-complying under the zoning bylaw. Therefore, the applicant can replace um, in the same location, provided they don't go any closer to that property line. And, and I know in other um, applications where we allow the side yard to be less, they had to prove that adequate room was there for maintenance of the property. And we're comfortable that that's being provided. So the applicant's not looking for a further reduction and the policy does not need to be amended. So it um, has not been presented here today. Um, as part of it. So we aren't asking for a reduction in the setback. We're just noting it's legal non-complying and they're not going any closer to that established property line. Okay, thank you. Um, my comments now to the rest of the committee is that uh, I, I read the comments from the NVCA. Um, I'm, I am concerned with the um, flood, ele flood elevations, et cetera indicated here. I know that the existing building has been there for 60 or 70 years. Um, we've not had severe storms probably in the last 60 or 70 years that uh, created these floodlines that the Conservation Authority uses. I, I support the recommendation of a deferral to further information is provided to support this uh, application. Thank you. Thank you, Member Cooney. Member Kennedy, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to add my comments with regards to the NBCA's letter. Um, I, I am in agreement uh, with Member Cooney as well. I do support deferring this application. Um, understanding the applicant's frustration with the time lapse for uh, NBCA to get back to them. But again, understanding the um, workload of the NBCA staff, um, they're not recommending a denial of this application. They're just saying a deferral. So they're looking, in my opinion, to work with the applicant. Um, I agree with the flood concerns. Um, I believe Hazel is the governing storm and that was 60 plus years ago. So we haven't had anything um, um, surveyed based on climate change. And I know that the NBCA are actively working in various municipalities with regards to updating their flood mapping and their flood um, elevations. So I am in agreement with deferring this application at this time. Thank you. Thank you. A question to planning staff, should we approve this, the applicant is still going to have to go through the hoops with the NBCA, am I not correct? Um, thank you, Chair Gannon. That is correct. We will not issue a building permit without an MVCA permit established. Um, so if you did choose to approve, even if you added a condition, they would still require that regardless. Um, but I'll leave that to the discretion of yourself based on the MVCA comments and the possibility that they could appeal the decision as well. Thank you. So to the applicant, you're hearing from my colleagues here and there are concerns about your application. We can ask you if you wish to defer it or we can vote on either approving it or denying it. Should we approve it, you're still going to have to go through the NVCA. And regardless of their late report, you've heard that they are unfortunately very busy. They, they, did, they did get back to you even if it was at the last hour and, and to us indicating their concerns but as you, as you have also heard, they are willing by the sounds of things to work with you. So I'm going to ask you, do you wish us to defer the application at this time until you've worked with the MVCA and see where we are, where you are, or do you wish us to move ahead with a, with a motion either to accept or, de or deny? I would ask the committee, um, I would ask the committee to uh, continue to proceed. Um, because deferring this uh, application, if NVCA is rejecting it, deferring it doesn't make doesn't make that doesn't make me go anywhere further. I'm going back to the loop, and pro if if my my proposals my my building is going to be flooded, there will be tons of others before me get flooded. 
because there are houses around the lake that is closer to the shoreline than me, a lot closer than me. So, and plus I'm moving it seven feet away from the water again. Um, I would ask to the committee to proceed, please. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Uh, Mr. Webster, you had some comments. Sorry, we can't hear you, Rick. Still, nothing. We can't hear you at all, Rick. We cannot hear you at all, Rick. Oh, it says you're connecting to audio. Your phone is connecting. Well, we're waiting for Member Webster, Member Kennedy, did you want to- go ahead? Okay, no, you're, you're good now, go ahead. I don't quite understand what's happening here, but uh, um, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't in all conscious, uh, I, I, I can't, I, deferring is, is in, it's just to be fairly obvious, I don't think you're going to get very far um, as far as the MDCA goes or a building permit goes in the current situation of the property that I saw today. I feel very, I feel very sorry for, for the situation that you're, you find yourself in. Uh, but this is $1,000 that will, you know, you have the potential to just not have it because if the committee, de if the committee denies, then you're, you're, you're back to square one and you'll be back to square one anyway with, with, um, NBCA and the building department. So, um, I, 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 I really do encourage you to consider a deferral. Uh, I don't think our approval is going to get you where you want to go. I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Member Kennedy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, um, my concern is with the NBCA's comments, um, the application as it is before us tonight um, may need to be tweaked. There's no doubt about it. And um, I can't in good conscience support this at this point without the NBCA's um, approvals in place. So um, again, as member Webster, um, to the applicant, I would recommend that we defer this. Dennis? Do, can I ask, can I ask uh, member Vanderwillen, do you wish to make any comments on this? Sorry, I missed that. We're just asking the other member of the committee who you can't see if he wishes to make any comments. Thank you. Henry, do you wish to make any comments? No response from member Vander Whelan. Go ahead, member Cooney. Uh, I just wanted to make a, a comment here with regards to previous comments by the Cons Conservation Authority is that when they, uh, when there were still issues that could be resolved, they indicate that a permit could be obtained and they never recommended deferral. There must be something within this application that is a, a great concern for them. And that's why it's probably being recommended that a deferral occur so that the applicant can meet with them and resolve their greatest concerns. Uh, again, I know you're indicating that they still have to get a permit from the uh, Conservation Authority, but in the past, they've made that comment. So, but they haven't done that this time. They, they've recommended a deferral. I think for the applicants, I know the time is an issue, but it's, it's an issue whether you defer it or it, you continue to move forward and it gets delayed or it gets denied if, if that's what the result is. Um, the possibility that could delay it even further. So my recommend, recommendation is that we follow the, uh, uh, the Conservation Authority's comments. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to pause for a second here. Thank you. Chair Gannon, 
I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Vanderweelen to go ahead now. Go ahead, Henry. Go ahead. You've muted yourself again. Henry, just, uh, okay, there you are. Unmute yourself. Henry, you're muted. Unmute yourself. You're muted, Henry, unmute yourself. Bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you should see a mute and a video button. Push the unmute button. Hello? Hello? Your video. Start we can your hear video. you, Henry, go ahead. Okay, like I gotta, this meeting, I can't participate in it. This is going in and out all the time. I can't, it's, from now on, I'll have to either go to some other place because this is not working here for me. Um, I, uh, so I'm just being frustrated because I can't participate in it. So can you hear me? We can hear you. You're loud and clear. Okay. So uh, yes, I have concerns with the uh, with the application. Also, um, I just wish there was more uh, information on the the plans, proposed plans for the uh, for the development of the property. Um, the one concern that uh, is uh, with the floodplain, uh, Member Cooney. I mentioned that uh, there hasn't been floods for since Hurricane Hazel, and so, like, what are what's their what's the NBCA's proposal for the floodplain? Because they have no idea what it's going to be in five years, ten years, or fifty years. So they have to base it on what has been, not what's going, what they think it's going to be. But I. I feel that we should uh, have it deferred until at least that uh, there's more uh, information given to us as towards uh, the plans of the property. Thank you. Thank you. So to committee, we have three choices, approve, deny, or defer. I will ask you, one of you to make a motion to with the, of the three, three decisions that you would like, and then I'll read out the uh, the rest of the motion. Go ahead, Mr. Webster. Just watch my head, Rick. If I nod, you're in. If I go like this, you're out. How about now? Thank you very much. I'd like to make a motion to defer this application. Thank you. Can I have a seconder for that? Good. Thank you. Moved by Webster, seconded by Cooney. That application A-21 is simply deferred until the next available committee meeting, committee of adjustment meeting mm -hmm. due to lack of following information, i.e. approval from the NVCA. A sufficient planner, Belcourt? Thank yeah, I think I think that um, that is sufficient. So due to, I would say, lack of consensus from MVCA. Okay, that's good. Lack of consent from MVCA. All in favor? Approved. Thank you, Ms. Liu. Unfortunately, as you heard, we did have a long discussion about this. We respectfully suggest that you work with the MVCA. Thank you. Okay, I'll have the Secretary Treasurer introduce item 4.2 in the agenda, please. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Item 4.2 of the agenda is a minor variance application 
A1921, submitted by Ken Henderson, owner of lands known municipally as Two Maltman Court. The purpose and effect of the application is to permit the construction of a 165.4 square meter detached accessory building with a storage loft in the rear yard. The proposed detached garage will exceed the maximum height area, height and area requirements, and in addition will require a reduced exterior side yard setback. Um, so a maximum total ground floor area of 165.4 square meters, whereas section 12.3.9 permits a maximum of 115, a maximum height of 5.23 meters, whereas section 3.7.5 permits a maximum height of 4.5 meters and an exterior side yard setback of 12 meters, whereas section 12.3.9 requires a minimum exterior side yard setback of 15 meters. Thank you. Has there been any additional correspondence and or comments that have been received? No written correspondence or comments have been received related to this application. Thank you. May I please have the applicant introduce themselves and provide us with information as to what it is that you wish to do. Uh, yeah, my name is Ken Henderson. Um, pretty standard, uh, just a three bay um, accessory building uh, storage building in the back. Um, I do have a couple of collector cars, so the building will just be for storage for the cars and then um, storage for a, a boat as well in the wintertime. And then um, the storage loft, um, I guess the reason the, the variance for the height is being uh, requested is to provide a wheelchair lift uh, access for me to get up to the storage loft uh, above one bay of the garage. Um, and then uh, the square footage uh, variance there is more again just for enough space for me to get around in the wheelchair uh, around the vehicles and stuff when they're uh, pulled into the garage. And the third variance, uh, the setback to the road, which is adjacent to the property. Um, the idea there was more just to move the building to that north uh, east corner of the yard, just to, I guess, create um, bigger separation between my neighbor and I and kind of preserve as much of the vegetation in there as possible. Um, and then aesthetically too, it'll allow the driveway to go up beside the existing garage and just straight back to the, the building itself at the back of the property. Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening? There are no members of the public registered to make an oral submission. Thank you to the committee. Are there any questions or comments that you have for the applicant? Go ahead, Member Cooney. I have a question for staff, uh, Planner Disk. Uh, the uh, area uh, that you're indicating uh, as the total ground floor area, does that include the existing garden shed that's on the property or is it being removed? Uh, no, the, uh, the shed is, would still remain there. Um, let me just, I'll just do a quick calculation here. One second. Okay. I was, um, uh, I'm just looking at the site plan here. And so the requested the requested size for the garage was 1780 square feet. Um, now, does that include the existing shed? I'll have to ask the applicant. Uh, no, that wouldn't have included the existing shed. Okay, so your options here, if the shed is not included, um, technically the shed needs to be included in the accessory building size. Okay. So if you wish to remain the shed on the property, we'll have to update and revise your application to include that square footage okay. or um, the shed would need to be removed. Now I'll leave that up to you to decide. All right. I, I, I just to make my point, I don't have any objection to the shed remaining. I just wanted to make sure that we dotted our I's, crossed our T's here so that we don't have the applicant doesn't have to come back and amend the application or a supplemental application to account for the shed. That's all. Thank you. Go ahead, Planner Belcourt. Um, uh, through you, Chair, to Planner List, I just want to confirm. Um, perhaps we ask the applicant applicant the size of the existing garden shed. If it's minimal, could we approve the application as amended and it be noted in the notice of decision? Um. Through you to Planner Belcourt, um, 
I believe the notice would be incorrect at that at this point. So a new notice should be issued. Um, technically, the application is changing. Um, I know it's super minor. Um, I was not aware of the shed on the property. I missed that. So my apologies. Um, so yeah, technically we'd have to issue an, a new notice, have a new meeting with that revised increase in the building or that shed would have to be removed and the variance would stand as it is presented tonight at 1780 square feet. Thank you. So to the applicant, how large is your, your shed? I didn't notice it or I wasn't paying attention. I believe it is 12 by 16. Okay, so that is greater than 100 square feet, so it can't be ignored. So I'm going to suggest to you that you, you ask us to defer it so that you get the application correct so that there is no issues in the future for you or your neighbors. Okay, and now just the square footage of the shed needs to be included then? Yes, it, does. Yes. it has, to be, has to be included in the, in the total calculation. Even though it's minuscule, you know, less than 1% still has to be there. Okay. Yeah. And again, I apologize. I, I'm looking at the aerial image and I don't see the shed. I think maybe it's close to the road just behind the house. Is that the building? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my apologies. I, I wasn't aware there was a, an additional building on the property. Um, so we will need to update your application um, just to increase the size, unfortunately. And Again, my apologies to to make this process a little bit longer for yourself, but uh, technically we will have to do that if you want to keep your shed. <laughs> yes, I would prefer to keep my shed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so can I have a mover please to defer this application on the grounds that due to, or at the applicant's request. We'll do it at the applicant's request. Moved by Webster, seconded by Kennedy, that application A1921, is hereby deferred until the next available committee of adjustment meeting at the applicant's request. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. We appreciate your cooperation and understanding. Okay, thank you. I'll ask the secretary treasurer now to please introduce the next application, item number 4.3 on the agenda. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Item 4.3 on the agenda is a minor variance application submitted by Doug Cates, owner of lands known municipally as 47 Idlewood Drive. The purpose and effect of the application is to permit the construction of an addition um, to the existing dwelling, which will house a family room addition and an attached garage south of the existing dwelling with a reduced exterior side yard setback of 4.26 meters, whereas section 4.3.7 requires a minimum of nine meters. Thank you. Has there been any additional correspondence and or comments that have been received? No written correspondence or comments have been received related to the application. Thank you. Can I please have the applicant introduce themselves and provide us with details of what it is that you're looking to do? Uh, good evening, committee. Uh, my name is Doug Cates. Uh, Address is 47 Idlewood Drive in Midhurst. What we would like to do is um, build a garage. And um, we've um, been working on plans to renovate our house. And as we've worked through those um, renovation plans, we've noticed that there are a couple of issues that are not gonna be satisfied by new paint and floor covering. Um, we actually need to add some space to uh, the family room and, uh, and to the garage. We've uh, looked at a couple of options uh, for additions and um, each time we end up uh, with the same issue, um, the family room and the garage need to be in the same southeast corner of the house. So um, we've looked at the um, exterior side setback and wondered why it needed to be so wide and what we could do if it was more like the interior side setback. And um, it looks like we could certainly put the garage there if we could change that setback. So then we started to look at why the setback was so wide. And um, 
apparently it's to prevent interference with road allowance, to prevent interference with sight lines and sight triangles, and to provide sufficient open, unencumbered space between buildings and structures and lot lines for maintenance, water drainage, and snow storage. So what I've done with my uh, application and um, and the appendices, appendices that I submitted with it is to try and illustrate that um, we can build the garage and we can still put ticks in all those boxes that the uh, wider setback would be required for. At this point, I'd like to thank the committee for considering our application. I'd also like to uh, thank uh, um, Brianna Belcourt for her help in in the uh, consultation process, and um, that's what we want to do. Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening? There is no one registered to make an oral submission on this application. Thank you. Any members of the committee have any questions or comments? I see none. Therefore, I will read resolution A2021, or I'm sorry, motion for A2021, that the Committee of Adjustment, having given consideration to the applicable provisions of Section 45 of the Planning Act, the official plan of the Township of Springwater, the characteristics of the land in question and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the application dated July 28, 2021, Correspondence is received and information presented at the hearing held on July 20, 20, July 28, 2021, and the discussion on the matter hereby approve application A 2021 as applied for. May I have a mover and seconder, please? Moved by Kennedy, seconded by Cooney. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Mr. Cates. You have approval, so it'll be a there's a waiting period before you can do anything with the uh, application. Thank you very much. I ask the Secretary Treasurer now to please introduce the next application, item number 4.4 .4 on the agenda. Thank you, Chair Gannon. The next item on the agenda is a minor variance application, A2121, submitted by Haley K of Dupuy Ouellet, Inc., on behalf of D. Sador and J. D. Sador owners of lands known municipally as 1109 Carson Road. The purpose and effect of the application is to permit the construction of addi an addition composed of a new attached garage and additional residential unit measuring approximately 100.3 square meters. Uh, an exter exterior side yard setback of 5.3 meters has been requested where a section 13.3.4 D requires a minimum exterior side yard setback of 15 meters. Additionally, the applicant has requested a rear yard setback of 12.5 meters, whereas section 13.3.4 requires a minimum rear yard setback of 15 meters. Thank you. Has there been any additional correspondence or comments that have been received? No written correspondence or comments have been received related to this application. Thank you. Can I ask the applicant to introduce themselves, please, and provide us with details of what it is that you're looking to do? So my name is Haley, and uh, the requested relief includes the exterior side yard setback from the required 15 meters to the proposed 5.3 meters and relief of the rear yard setback from the required 15 meters to a proposed 12.5 meters um, due to the existing hydro corridor easement and the location of the existing septic system. It's not practical to locate the addition in any other yard. Given the request affects the exterior side yard, we have consulted with Public Works and they have um, stated that they have no concerns with the proposal. Also important to note is the fence and the trees that are existing on the exterior side yard act as a buffer for privacy and does not interfere with any sight lines or otherwise. Um, the apartment will be used for Jesse's father who will be there in the summer and the garage will be used to park the vehicles in the winter. Um, as their existing garage bay is too small to park a vehicle. Um, so the existing garage will be uh, used for storage of outdoor equipment, such as kayaks, skis, and snowboards. And the proposal would meet all other zoning standards and accessory dwelling provisions. Thank you. 
Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening? There is no members of the public registered to make an oral submission. Thank you. To the committee, any members having any questions or comments that they would like to make on this? Member Kennedy, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Garen, on, I'd like to ask the planners, um, there were no comments received. Was Ontario Hydro circulated on this application? Um, no, they were not. So it did not um, interfere with the easement uh, setbacks. I can confirm if in our uh, official circulation, they were included. I believe we typically only circulate them on consent applications, though. Sorry, Planner uh, Belcourt, I didn't catch all of that. You said they were, weren't or were circulated. Sorry, I'm just going to double check. So just Thank give you. me one moment. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Um, so we did circulate their land use planning department at Hydro One as part of the circulation on um, July 9th. Thank you, and nothing was received. Perfect, thank you very much. Thank you, any other members of committee have any questions? Not seeing any or hearing any. I have a resolution then or a motion then for, for a, let me make sure I got the right one. 2121. That the Committee of Adjustment, having given consideration to the applicable provisions of Section 45 of the Planning Act, the official plan of the Township of Springwater, the characteristics of the land in question, and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the application dated July 28, 2021, the correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on July 28, 2021, and the discussion on the matter hereby approve application A2021 as applied for it. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Kennedy, seconded by Cooney. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. You've got your, as previously indicated, there is a waiting time before you can move forward, but it's 20 days, I believe. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll now ask the secretary treasurer to please introduce the next application item number 4.5 on the agenda. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Item 4.5 on the agenda is a minor variance application, A2221, submitted by S. Weber and T. Welsh, owners of lands known municipally as 1518 County Road 92. The purpose and effect of the application is to permit the construction of an oversized detached garage measuring 89 18 square meters, which will exceed the maximum permitted height and total floor area when combined with the existing detached structures on the property. Has Sorry, Dennis, you're muted. Yeah. Has there been any additional correspondence or comments that have been received? No written correspondence or comments have been received related to this application. Thank you. Can I please have the applicant introduce themselves and provide us with details of what it is you're asking for? The applicant, I believe, is Tanya Welsh, and you're muted at this point. There's um, Tanya was having some internet. Oh, maybe she's here. Hi. Sorry, we were calling in as well, just in case we can't get through. Okay, and which number are you calling okay. in from? Um, four, oh, sorry, probably Steve's number, not my own. Okay. Can you okay. hear us? Yep, we can hear you. The only number I see this is a 705-734. Oh, I think that's Rick's number. Right, okay. 
Yeah, I don't see any other numbers no, on it's, the uh, Okay, we, we can hear you, so just watch okay. the feedback and carry on, please. Okay, so thank you. It's uh, Steve Weber and Tanya Welsh calling in. Uh, we're at 1518 County Road 92, and we were wanting to put up a uh, 30 by 32 foot garage. And we had ordered a garage from MK5 out of Midland. It's a engineered building. And however, they went over the height restriction by eight inches. Um, so I'd like to get a minor variance for the height requirement by eight inches. And also the uh, amount of buildings that we have on the lot at, at the time, there's a couple other accessory buildings here that uh, put us over the maximum number of accessory buildings. So if I can keep it, it would work good for um, seasonal storage. However, it's too wet in the spring to get back there with any vehicles to put anything in. So um, that's why we were wanting to put the garage in up off the driveway. Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening? There is no one met, um, registered to make an oral submission on this application. Thank you. Are there any members of the committee wishing to make comments or questions about, of the applicant? Member Cooney, go ahead. Um, my first question is to staff on this one. Just to confirm the side yard setback is adequate and it complies. The proposed yes, side yard it's, setback. Uh, 15 feet. 15 yeah. feet off the side yard. Yeah, if I could just have staff confirm it. Yep, just one second, please. Okay. I believe it, it complies, but I'll just double check that for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the reason I'm asking that, and this is to the applicant uh, through the chair, is um, looks like the your property grades quite substantially to the west from your driving your existing driveway, and I assume that you'll want to have your garage slightly higher than your driveway for drainage and grade into and out of the building. So by raising that elevation, right. will you have, we, will you have enough room uh, in the side yard to do the grading? to support, not only support your building, but also the drainage uh, from your lot from the County Road 92 to the back. Well, what I'd done, uh, I'd looked at the grade off the driveway as it is, and I'd allowed 15 feet to give me the same grade from the driveway down to the side yard. If it's gonna be too tight, I can move the garage closer to the driveway. I have approximately 70 feet there, I believe from the driveway to the property line. Okay, I, I just thought I'd confirm again, uh, I'll go back to planner this just to clarify that they do have side yard setback. Yes, they do. The requirement is 9.84 feet. So the 15 feet meets the requirement. Okay, okay, thank you. I just wanted to and bring it to the attention of the applicant that it might get pretty tight with your grading. And you, if you have room to massage the, the building location, you might want to consider it. Thank you. Sure, Thank you. sure. Hey, hey. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Any other committee members have any questions or comments? I see none. Then I will read the motion for A2221. That the committee of adjustment having given consideration of the applicable provisions of section 45 of the Planning Act, the official plan of the Township of Springwater characteristics of the land in question and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the application dated July 28, 2021. Correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on July 28, 2021 and the discussion on the matter hereby approve application A2221 as applied for. May I have a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Kennedy, seconded by Webster. All in favor? Motion is carried. There you go, you have a waiting period and then you can move forward with your application. Thank you. I'll ask the 
Secretary Treasurer now to please introduce the next application, item number 4.6 on the agenda. And I, before you do that, I'm gonna ask the Tanya Welsh to mute her telephone. Okay, she's done that, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Item 4.6 on the agenda is a consent application, B1221 by Richard, I apologize if I say this wrong, Debo, on behalf of G. Morley and Sons Transportation Limited, owners of land municipally known as 3176 Highway 26. The purpose of the application is for approval of a surplus farm dwelling consent consisting of approximately 140 meters of frontage by a depth of 125 meters of land containing a single family dwelling and a detached accessory building. The applicant proposes to retain approximately 44 hectares of farmland. Thank you. Has there been any additional correspondence and or comments that have been received? Yes, there has been additional correspondence received. Comments were received from the township drainage superintendent stating that the property is not assessed into any municipal drains. Therefore, no condition to satisfy the drainage act is required. The Ministry of Transportation provided comments noting they would support the severance provided a condition is added noting that the home be accessed from a single entrance from Highway 26 and the access for the farmer's field be from Horseshoe Valley Road. Complete copy of the comments have been added to the agenda for reference. Further, Hydra One and MVCA have no concerns. Thank you. I'll please ask the applicant to introduce themselves and explain what it is that you're asking for. Good evening. I'm uh, Rick DeBox and I'm acting as the authorized agent representing Bill and Paul Morley, who are also here tonight. Uh, they are the owners of G. Morley and Sons Transport Limited, which are the owners of municipal address 3176 Highway 26. Um, I submitted a letter and I summarized it here with a couple of points. So I'll just go through the uh, my points. Uh, the subject parcel has an area of approximately 110 acres and the owners propose to sever a portion of approximately 4.9 acres, which is occupied by an existing house. The owner is actively farmed as bona fide farmer, the subject lands and adjoining lands at 3118 Highway 26 for over 40 years. During this time, they farmed a combination of cash crop and also cow, cow calf operation up to 40 head of Black Angus. Being over 70 and retired, they have turned to local farmers to continue their work and farm the land. The owners live elsewhere and their current farm operation deems the house and surrounding 4.9 acres as surplus to their current operations. The proposed severed land are not currently farmed today because of old buried foundations. The existing house has been inhabited by the owner's grandfather and rented out after his passing. The house and severed portion is intended for a family member to be purchased. Knowing that an undertaking is required upon a successful severance request, we are prepared to enter in such an agreement with the township. We're also amend amendable to the rezoning of the retained lands that would limit any development and ensure that the retained lands continue to be used only for agricultural purpose. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening? There are no members of the public registered to make an oral submission. Thank you. Do members of the committee have any comments or questions of the applicant? I see none. Therefore, I will read the resolution or be of a motion for B1221. That the Committee of Adjustment, having given consideration to the applicable provisions of Section 53 of the Planning Act, the official plan of the Township of Springwater, the characteristics of the subject land and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the subject application dated July 28, 2021, correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on July 28, 2021, and the discussion on the matter hereby approve of the application as applied for subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the applicant meet all requirements, financial or otherwise, as a municipality. Number two, that the applicant provide two copies of the registered survey prepared by an Ontario land surveyor. Number three, that the applicant provide an undertaking and draft transfer, demonstrating that the retained farmlands will continue to be owned by a bona fide farmer. Number four, that the applicant rezone the retained farmlands to an agricultural consolidation zone to prohibit residential use 
injury zone, the severed lands to agricultural exception zone to recognize any existing accessory buildings and to prohibit the keeping of livestock within those buildings. Number five, that it be confirmed that the private well and septic systems are wholly contained within the property limits of the severed residential lands prior to registration of the severance. And number six, that the applicants satisfy all entrances access requirements of the Ministry of Transportation and the County of Simcoe as required. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Cooney, seconded by Webster. All in favor? Application is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Moving on to the rest of the agenda, is there any other business to discuss this evening? Henry, did you wish to speak? Unmute yourself, Henry. Henry's frozen. Sorry, Henry, you're frozen and you're not unmuted. Go ahead, Mr. Webster. Oh, hang on a second. We got Henry back. Unmute yourself, Henry. You're not, you're on, you're still muted, Henry. We can see you, but you're muted. Yeah, now I'm on. I'm unmuted. Is it? You're unmuted. Can you hear now. me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay, like so. Yeah, I just don't have anything else to say other than uh, this has got to change different than what it is because last meeting. We've lost you, Henry. Henry, you're still unmuted according to the screen. We've lost your, uh, your video, but we can't hear you. Now you're muted, Henry. Um, Chair Gannon, if Henry does wish to um, speak, it's probably best he leaves his video off. Um, just, I, I, I've seen in the rural areas that sometimes that happens when signal isn't that great. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's what I'm trying to tell him. Well, I've, we've lost them. Well, he's still, no video, but no audio. Henry, you need to unmute I have the video in. Uh, just unmute yourself, Henry, and, and turn your video off. You're still muted, Henry. Okay, you're unmuted, Henry. Go ahead and speak. You're muted again, Henry. I appreciate his frustration here. It's obviously kind of difficult. Member Kennedy, you wanted to say something? Thank you, Dennis. So the million dollar question to staff, have you heard anything from council with regards to uh, in council meetings again and whether or not um, we're gonna be continuing with these virtual meetings? Um, thank you, member Kennedy. At this time, um, we have not had any direction that our meetings will be changing to an in-person setting. Um, they are still virtual. I will um, discuss the matter with Director Spagnell um, in the coming days to see if there is any movement, um, just noting the internet concerns that there are, um, even just about the committee going back into the chambers, if that is an option. I will um, follow up with you once I hear more um, and seek direction from, I guess, CAO Smith as well. Thank you, I appreciate that because uh, as you guys know, the past, this meeting works fine. They've, they've uh, done some uh, changes to the computer for me, but the previous two meetings, I was having the uh, technical difficulties as well, not listen, not being able to hear some of the comments. So I understand Henry's frustration. It's, uh, it's extremely frustrating. Thank you. Mr. Webster, can't hear you.
Pleasure connecting, Rick. Now, okay. part of the problem is I think people are confused between computer audio and phone audio. And I'm not sure that even the staff is able to interact or act with us on that. So all of the other Zoom meetings, and I do a number of them with different organizations, it works better. We've lost you. Oh, there you go. I don't get move, it. move the phone closer to your mouth. I have nothing from you, Rick. Rick, there's nothing. There's no audio from you at all. There's no audio from you at all, Rick. Says that you're there, but there's no audio. No. Oh. Nothing. How about staff? Okay, can you get a little closer? How about staff? Can anybody hear me? Just. We can just barely hear you. On my phone. Yep. How about now? Okay. Go ahead. Hey. Hey. Okay, so what I was saying was, and there's an echo here because now I've got my computer audio on and I've got my phone audio on. It works. I believe, back. Rick, that we are just hearing you through your computer audio. It's very faint and quiet, whereas when you speak, when we usually use your phone audio, it seems much louder. So you're, it says that your phone's muted. Can you press star six? There you go. So uh, so somebody at the other end has to unmute this or mute it, not me, because I'm not muted on my own, on my phone. So we have to allow you to speak on your phone and then you can unmute yourself. So I allowed you to speak when you start it and then you just have to press star six. But if you just don't, if you just if you just allow me to speak, I'll do my own muting here. Yep, yep. And we we have allowed you to speak. I don't know what happens, why it changes partway through. It anyway. The, the, all of, all of that to say, the video is fine. Computer audio sucks. Phone audio is good. Generally speaking, is that correct? Yes, I think it depends on the device. I know that I have um, different settings that sometimes I don't know how it gets clicked. It moves to my webcam instead of my computer. You can't hear me properly, so I just have to re-click it. It really depends on the device you're using, I believe. So, Brianna, are you using your computer audio right now or your phone audio? My computer audio. Okay. Who else is using their phone audio? Just me? I believe, I believe so, yes. I'm not. Because my computer audio sucks. Okay, Henry, you're freezing again because you're you got too much going on. There you go. You're open again. Yeah, so I'm in and out all the time. Like, I mean, I I hear fifty percent of the conversation. Like, yeah. So I, I my think the uh, sister-in-law just got. Sorry. I think we all understand the frustrations. I think that it's a case that we do need to have a serious conversation from uh, the secretary treasurer to the director and to the CAO, put us in the room, let the other people still be a video linked to us, an audio linked to us, so we can at least converse and uh, work somewhat better. I've never seen this occur with council meetings. And I would have to suggest that the council meetings You've got people who are just as remote as we are. So I don't understand what's going on either. But 
uh, I will as well follow up with the email to the CAO and to Bre Director Spragno suggesting that we need to be in the, in the same room. There's no reason now why we can't be in the same room. Uh, the other interesting uh, thank thing you. that I would forward is I got a survey this week uh, to respond uh, uh, about internet uh, service in Springwater Township because once again, somewhere in this great land of ours, we're going to get everybody proper and efficient internet connection. And Springwater Township wanted us to fill out a survey. Quite frankly, it's laughable. If Springwater Township doesn't know that we have this kind of internet service in Springwater Township. Then they're the only people on the planet who doesn't know. So don't waste time with surveys, just fix it. Yeah. I looked at the proper screen. internet all over the municipality. Yeah. Don't, don't look, survey us, just fix it. I, I now, looked at on another topic, here are minutes it says we're gonna do a delegation uh, regarding a lack of support at, uh, at uh, IPAC or IPAC or whatever about it. Have we done that? I have been in conversation with the clerk because the matter was discussed in closed session. She is conversing with the CAO who was on vacation has just returned as to determine when we will do so. So the matter is still in the forefront. We can't do it as a public delegation because the matters were discussed in closed session. So it is still in, on my agenda to, to look after things. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Okay. So again, I'm going to reiterate, I will send an email to the CAO and to, the, to Director Spragenal expressing our concerns that, and we believe that we should be in the same room as a committee. Public doesn't need to be there at this point so that we can uh, properly conduct these meetings. Anything else? Go ahead, Lauren. Just for the chair to staff, if there's, um... If, if council or the CAO um, or the director have concern with so many of us in one room, I think you have a couple of meeting rooms at the admin offices. Maybe we split up to keep their concerns with regards to distance, just something to put on the table if they don't want us all in the same room uh, to help uh, the other members that are having uh, internet uh, connection issues. Thank you. Okay, if that's it, can I have a, a motion that the Committee of Adjustment meeting held on July 28, 2021 now does adjourn at 8.18. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Webster, seconded by Kennedy. All in favor? Jerry, yes. Thank you. thank you, staff, for your cooperation and assistance this evening. It's been a little bit of frustration, but we'll get through it. Thanks, everybody. It must be Thank you. Yeah. Um, so just, just as a quick for Rick and Henry, uh, Lauren and I both may be away at the next meeting. So we're just trying to figure out the logistics. Are either of the three of you, Patty, Henry, or Rick around on the 25th of August? Or do you know that far in advance? I know Rick likes to take worldwide vacations, so. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Okay, so you, that looks like three people, Brianna. So yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. You, we may want to consider that. That's three, three potentials not there. Okay, I may have to um, follow up with an email to see when you are available, as we do have at least four, maybe five applications that are. Um, kind of counting on to go at that time. Um, so we'll have to have a discussion to see. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thanks, everyone. Have a good rest if of I, the week. Go, go ahead, Rick. Generally, if I could do an audio from afar, I, I would be able to. Yeah, and and I, may, I may be in the same position. So we'll, we'll have to see. I as well. I, I'll confirm. But... Yeah. Yeah, so if you guys could confirm that in the next day or so, that would be um, great. And, and then we can look at alternate dates if needed. Um, okay. okay, thanks okay. everyone. Okay. Thanks everyone, take care. Have a great night.
Yeah, Deborah, I'm sorry about that one application. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> a good catch. <laughs> yeah. Better now than at building permit stage. Well, I thought it would just be a simple fix.